Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are working on a mid-year review. This tag was started by, I believe, Alexis Jung. I'm not sure. I will make sure and tag her just in case. I saw it kind of floating around. Um, essentially what it is, it's a check-in, a review of all the products that we've been using up until this point. Now, I know it's a little late, it's the end of July, but instead of doing my July favorites and fails, I thought, you know what, why don't I actually just give them an insight into what I've been loving, what maybe didn't work for me, and just give a mini review based on that. If you are a subscriber, welcome again to my channel. Thanks for coming once more. If you're new, uh, my name is Yadi, and we like to focus on makeup, skincare, fun unboxings. We do a lot of giveaways on this channel. So if that sounds like fun to you and you want to be part of a community that uplifts each other, that loves each other, um, really helps each other with makeup questions, skincare questions, different suggestions on tips and tricks, then stick around, subscribe. Come join part of our family. Since today's video is essentially a tag video, I also thought that it would be fun if we did another collab. Yes, another collab. Now, the reason why I thought a collab would be especially helpful in this type of video is because I'm only one person. I only like a certain set of products or I only have one type of skin. And so I thought if we get a good group together of individuals that are content creators that are also really good at what they do, they test a ton of product and so they can give you really great insight into these products, then that would be helpful, right? And so today our video is in collaboration with a few individuals. Now, let me start by introducing you to the one that I brought the idea to first. Her name is Aisha Vander. She's an amazing content creator from the UK. She's so beautiful, but I think what really caught my eye was just how artistic she is. I think that that day she was talking about a Pia Louise review of some sort, but she had all of these crazy colorful shadows and I'm sitting there watching the video and I'm like, what in the world is she gonna do with that? And she created the most amazing, beautiful eye look. She gave the best, most concise review. Um, I tend to be a little chatty and so sometimes when I see others that can give really concise reviews, that really attracts me because I wanna learn to be a little bit more like not Everybody is here for all my chattiness and all my mess, right? So I really, really loved her approach. I thought that she was super classy, super knowledgeable, super artistic, which is kind of all the things that I aspire to be. I thought that this would be the perfect one for me to work with her on because I'm always so interested in what people do for makeup and skincare around the world. After that, it was very natural for me to bring in Sunny. Sunny from Makeup Skin is somebody that I've collaborated with before. We worked on the foundation tag video. She's from the UK as well. She's so, so beautiful. We have grown extremely close. I love the way that she also gives her reviews. She does focus more on luxury reviews, which I appreciate because those items tend to be a little bit pricier and so I really do rely on people that know their Chanel, that know their YSL Couture, that know Charlotte Tilbury so that I can go and then invest my money. After that, we are collaborating with um, someone that is new to me. Her name is Bobby Lace. And oh my goodness, you guys, Aisha and Bobby were just meant to be. They are so, so creative. They make the most amazing artistic looks that, you know, maybe you can't really wear to the office, but at the same time are so fun and they really bring out this different side of us when it comes to makeup. And so I just love watching her creations. She will start a video and she has this series going now, which is the monochromatic series, where essentially she'll choose a color for her eyes and then she'll use that um, for the lips and sometimes for the highlight. It is just like magic to watch her transform into this look. Um, I think the last one that I saw from her was blue. And so she did this blue eye look with clouds everywhere, which, you know, there's like, um, I guess this trend going around where people are creating looks with clouds. And then of course the lips had a little bit of a hint of a blue. You would think that it would be super editorial and not really something that, you know, you would walk out of the house with. And of course she had little mini clouds everywhere, but at the same time, it's kind of a blue that I would wear anyway. So anyway, I'm just really, really happy to have connected with her through Aisha. Um, she's actually only like a couple hours away from me. So we've already talked about meeting up and 
doing something fun together. But again, you know, the power of YouTube, the power of community, like how do we bring really good people together? And so I'm so excited to have met her. Um, we're also collaborating with someone new to me. Her name is Alicia Martinez. Um, and she's such a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. She does really beautiful looks um, in a very simple way, I feel. Like when I watch her do some of the looks that she does with her eyeshadow, she's very soft-spoken and she's very real and she goes in there and very easily creates this beautiful look. The way that she does everything and the way that she approaches things and how she talks to you through camera just makes you feel like you're sitting in the room with her. And so, you know, I am very, very happy to be connected to her. And then last, but definitely not least, I mean, very quickly became one of the closest people to me is Kara from Beauty and the Frizz. Um, you know, I just, I've grown to really, really trust her suggestions on makeup, on different brands that I haven't tried as well as just bouncing ideas off of her creatively. And uh, there's very little that I want to do where Kara's not involved. And so I'm so happy that she agreed to do another tag with me. This is super, super long, but I wanted to really spend the time to talk about each and every one because they're all so special. Let's get right into what my mid-year review is. Um, I will leave all the questions down below. I will tag Alexis Jong. I, I think she started the tag. I want to give her credit. So I'll definitely tag her channel down below. And I'll also leave the questions um, listed out so that if any other content creator wants to do this now or maybe at the end of the year, I think it's a great way for you to give many reviews to your subscribers so that they kind of see what you're doing and how you feel about certain products that you maybe have mentioned once or twice, um, they want to know. And so this is how we do it. So let's get started. The way that I'm going to start, which is the way she started, was by giving uh, my top 10 products. I'm going to do a very speedy review on each one and why I love them. And then we'll get into the questions that really curate our favorites for mid-year 2020. The first beauty product that I absolutely love that I purchased in 2020 is the Sonia G Sky Set of brushes. They are absolutely beautiful. I'm definitely diving into natural hair brushes. I don't know too much about them, but they totally change the way that my eye application um, goes down. They blend out colors so seamlessly. They're so beautiful. They're so soft. They don't tug on my eye or feel harsh. And I love them. This is my number one top pick for favorite products mid-year 2020. Number two is my Wayne Goss large brush with the collection that he launched a couple months ago. It was three different brushes, but this is my favorite brush of the bunch. It's very, very soft. It's contoured so that it specifically fits this groove area here. I use it for my bronzer. This is a everyday use. I don't use any other brush for my bronzer now. And therefore, let me just show you guys what it looks like. Um, one of my top 10 products mid-year 2020. The next one I actually got very recently, but it just instantly became a favorite for me. And that is the Patrick Ta New Blush Duo. So beautiful, it's mirrored, sorry. I have the shade She's So LA, and it is just a really beautiful rosy brown color. Essentially what you do is you go in with the powder section of the blush and then um, after you've done that, if you want maximum color payoff, you'll go in with the cream section of the blush. That makes a lot of sense to me. I do my makeup like that for my oily skin review anyway, so I was not at all put off by the fact that you went in with powder before creams. I think that it actually gives the face a very natural, beautiful look, and it sure does. Everybody's obsessed, including me. That's uh, my number three pick. Number four, everybody knows I'm obsessed with Pat McGrath. I, I, I think I pretty much blasted every Every opportunity I get. The one that I use most days, just because I'm obsessed with the way that it makes my lipstick look, is the Pat McGrath uh, Lip Fetish Lip Balm in Noir. Um, it's a beautiful color. It gives a really pretty pink, blue hue to the lips. And it's a lip balm. It just goes over any lipstick and it just looks beautiful. It looks like it would be weird, but it's not. I'm gonna link my full face Pat McGrath video so that you can see what I'm talking about. But this is definitely a top 10 product for mid-year 2020. Number five, this is a repeat too. I'm so sorry, but it's that good. It's that good. Is my e.l.f. Matte Oil Control Primer. Um, this thing is beautiful. It's an exact dupe for the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I absolutely love it. It mattifies my T-zone, but it doesn't dry out the sides of my face, which I love. The next product, I think, 
is not really a surprise. I love it so much. I tell everybody to buy it, even though it's kind of pricey, but it is my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Bronzer. I have the shade tan. I absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. It's filled with hyaluronic acid, um, so it doesn't make your face look overly powdery or cakey. It just seamlessly blends into the face, and this is definitely a favorite for 2020. Love it. The next product, I've also only had a few weeks, but I know that it works really well. I've tested it. Everybody has great reviews about the product for good reason, and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This stuff works. I bought the mini. Um, I'm going through it kind of fast. I will buy the full size, but it just works, you guys. This is a time where we're going out when we go out and we're wearing masks. So, you know, our masks are filled with foundation and makeup and they just look gunky and gross. I put this thing to the test. It makes my makeup stay put. It does have a little bit of alcohol. So if you're sensitive to that or to scent, you may not like it, but in terms of doing what it says it's going to do, which is making your foundation stay put, it absolutely does. This is my mid-year favorite as well. Next one is one that was in my June favorites and fails, um, and it is the Nikia Joy uh, Velvet Finishing Powder. It's absolutely beautiful, you guys. It has so many amazing ingredients for your face, like sweet almond oil, jojoba oil, vitamin E, so it doesn't dry out your face, but it makes your face super beautiful satin finish looking. Um, it definitely blurs out the pores. I don't know how she did it, but this is the most beautiful formulation that I have found for oily skin. The next product, which I bought very early in the year, but I definitely wanted to share. I do have a video on this on my easy brow tutorial, but it is the Urban Decay Brow Blade, and the shade that I use is in Dark Drapes. Um, essentially, it is an eyebrow pencil on one side, so it has just a regular brow pencil. It is thin so that you can make those really hair-like strokes in there. And on the other side, it has a brush. It looks like an eyeliner brush, but it's it goes in there and it's liquid and it helps you really make it so that your brows look microbladed. It is the most amazing product I've gone through. I think this is number two because they do last quite a bit, but I already have a backup because I know I have to have it to make my brows look good. This is also a top 10 product for me so far. And the last product, which later in the video, you'll see one, but it's a used one and it's kind of dirty. I apologize, but it is my e.l.f. Camel Concealer Sponge. This thing is so good, guys. If you can see the shape on that, I mean, it just has the perfect shape at the tips to get right into the groove here. I love it. I have a dirty one later in the video. This one's clean. I have a, a couple backups actually, and it's so inexpensive, but it's become like literally an everyday staple, so I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so let's get going on the rest of the products. There is eight very specific questions that really helped curate our list for favorites of mid-year 2020. So let's get into those. Okay, so number one is the most disappointing purchase. Like, let's just lay it out there. Um, this year I thought, you know what? I've waited long enough. I have always resisted doing this, but I really, really want to try the La Mer Foundation. And if you guys don't know, this foundation retails for $120. Um, I will put the picture up here. There's a reason why I'm not holding up that foundation because it is my most disappointing purchase for 2020. I purchased it because, you know, I want to know, like, why is it $120? It has this magical seawater a concoction of some sort or algae water, whatever it is, you know? And I wanted to know. Um, I didn't have a YouTube channel by then. Uh, I was just really, really curious. And so I purchased it during the VIB Sephora sale earlier this year, got 20% discount, so it wasn't a full $120. And wah, 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 the most disappointing purchase of 2020 thus far. Not only is it such a huge hit to the pocketbook and to the gut at $120, but it just did not perform as beautifully as I had heard. Um, I had heard that it was very skin-like. I heard that it wore off very naturally. I heard that it had skin-loving ingredients, which, you know, I believe it does, but 
at least on my skin, it really just slipped and slid everywhere. Even if I went in with powder first, depending, it didn't matter what primer I used, it just didn't work for me. I just couldn't justify the cost, you guys. So this is why I'm popping up a picture because I sure as hell returned that. Most disappointing purchase of 2020 so far. Okay, number two, the makeup product that pleasantly surprised you so far in 2020 is the e.l.f. Matte Oil Control Primer. It has kaolin, clay, and tea tree. I purchased this primer at Walmart for $10 and it very quickly became a staple. Maybe the second or third time that I went in with it, I instantly could call it out. I knew exactly that this was um, an exact dupe for the Smashbox photo finish primer. I still love this primer, don't get me wrong, but when this primer at $10, I think about a third of what this one costs, um, is coming in exactly the same, I'm gonna pay attention. And so this is an exact, exact dupe for this. This made it into my June favorites and fails as a favorite because it just works so beautifully. It mattifies this T-zone area, which is such a problem area for me, but it doesn't dry anything else out. It just, it's so beautiful on the skin and I just love it. It totally surprised me. Okay, question number three. What is the most expensive makeup item that you've purchased in 2020? It would have to go to our mama Pat. I discovered Pat McGrath this year and honestly, like my life will never be the same. No joke. Like the, the, the quality of these shadows is just so far like nothing else I've ever tried. And you know, I've tried some other high-end stuff like Dior, um, I've tried Tom Ford shadows, and those are all very, very beautiful, very high-end and luxe. But this formula for me is just so buttery, so smooth, blends out easily every single time, no matter what. Those are the most expensive for 2020. Uh, need I say more? The least expensive products that I've purchased in 2020 is these e.l.f. Bite Size uh, Mini Eyeshadow Palettes. They're beautiful. You know, they had their little moment on YouTube where everybody was using them everywhere and they're great quality. They provide like these mono monochromatic looks, if you will. Um, they glide on beautifully onto the eyelids. They're $3 each. And I do have all six, and I don't know where the other three are, but they're $3 a piece, you can't go wrong. Um, you know, it, there's not a lot of thinking that goes with it. You just start with the lighter shade, maybe throw the inner corner uh, glitter in there and darken up the outer V, you gotta look. Number five is my favorite everyday product. And that goes to my Wayne Goss Large Face Brush. This launched earlier this year and it launched as a collection. There's three brushes in the face set. I'm gonna be honest, these two I can totally do without. I just don't even know what they serve their purpose for, even for highlight or whatever. They're just too flimsy in my opinion. They don't really pick up very much product. Um, I've played with them quite a bit and I just, they don't work for me. The one that I actually fell in love with that I didn't think I would was actually the biggest of them. They're so, so soft. I am notorious for going in just a little too hard with my bronzer or my contour shades. And this is so, so soft and so wispy that you can either go light if you want to concentrate in one area or you can go a little bit harder in and it kind of just splays out. So there's really never going to be such a tough concentration of color in one area, which is really important for people that are not experts like myself. Number six is the favorite product for special occasions. This has actually not only been the case this year, although we technically haven't done too much this year, but there's been a couple times where I did have a special occasion, maybe a super, super important Zoom meeting or at the beginning of the year, um, I was in transition with my job and so I went to a couple job interviews and the one that I always reserve for a special occasion is actually not a makeup product it's a skincare product and it is this 111 rose gold brightening facial mask it's a sheet mask these are super super pricey you guys this brand as a whole is very pricey these sheet masks are like magic I think the other one that I can kind of compare to is the Tatcha luminous silk 
sheet mask. I think that one's beautiful as well, but it just gives the face this really, really beautiful radiance, this really beautiful glow, lit from within, but so freaking lit that even through makeup, your face just glows like an angel. I reserve it for special occasions. The pack comes with five of these sheet masks for $125, so they're like 25 bucks a piece. But I promise you, well, well worth it. Like if you're getting ready for the event of your life, like your wedding or you know your daughter's wedding, any of those, this is the mask that I would pull out. And I just, I know it's expensive, but I have to share because this is the one that I would use for special occasions. Number seven is my favorite product that met or exceeded my expectations. And again, I hate to be repetitive, but it is these, again, Pat McGrath palettes. I had heard that they were good. Everybody always hyped them up. I generally knew that they were going to be good, um, but it's always nice when you buy the product and they actually perform the way that everybody's hyped them up to perform or the way that they market the product. And so they met my expectations. That's why I spent the $125 initially but I would say they even exceeded my expectations because since then, I mean, I will come in this room and I will just swatch my night away. Um, they're just so beautiful. I play with them all the time. I may not use them on camera all the time, but in my daily life, I do. Um, I play with color a lot, you guys. Like, I think I always say this, like glitter all day, every day. And so it doesn't really matter if they're a bold color or a loud color or whatever. I'm okay using them day to day. So Pat McGrath palettes, my gosh, if you've ever been inclined to, if you like the color story, if you need the colors in that color story, then I would say go for it. You will never regret it, I promise you. Uh, the last question is actually two parts and I actually chose two different products because I think they're that good. But the first part of the question is, what is the product that was a, a life-changing makeup product? What I chose is my life-changing makeup product. I guess technically you could also kind of call it like a hybrid, uh, skincare product is an eye corrector. Um, I never really have had dark circles around my eyes, so I never thought that I needed a color corrector. And then when I tried it, I was actually purchasing the product because of its skin loving benefits. Um, and so when I received the color corrector and I used it, I could instantly tell what a visible lift it really created for my eyes. And I'm talking about the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal um, for the eye. It's a serum uh, mixed with SPF for the eye area that's safe. You go in with just a tiny little dab. You go in as, as I put on the sunscreen on my face, I'll dab just a tiny little bit around my eyes. Not only does it color correct, it provides sunscreen protection and it also has ingredients in there that will help with the fine lines and wrinkles. It will help with uh, maybe bringing back just a little bit of elasticity. I don't, I can't really say that I've seen a ton of um, benefits in that department, but I will say as far as sunscreen goes and color correcting, I absolutely love this. And so it did change my makeup game because I didn't use a color corrector before. If I'm going out and it's nighttime, which let's be honest, I'm not going out that much, but when I don't need to put sunscreen on around the eye, which is never unless it's dark. Um, I also love the Charlotte Tilbury eye color corrector. I think that it's beautiful. And I think that in my total Charlotte Tilbury face video that I did, you guys could see the immediate difference of color correcting under one eye versus the other. So changed my makeup game, color correctors. The second part of that question it is, it is what is the product that altered the way that I do my makeup? And forgive me, but it's a little dirty, but I wanted to show it to you guys anyway because it's so, so good. I have backups of this stuff because it's so good. Is my e.l.f. Camo Concealer Sponge. I love, love the shape. It's like this long, like oblong shape, um, but you know, it's got this little, it's got a perfect shape at the top so that it, really just fits very nicely in there. Um, in the past, the way that I had done my concealer under my eyes, I would go in with a concealer brush and I would just pack on the product to get maximum payoff of the product. And then I would just quickly go in with my finger and just kind of dab, dab, dab. 
I, I don't know. I'm just of the belief that when you go in with a wet sponge, it really gives the skin just such a skin-like appearance. It looks hydrated. It looks dewy. Um, you know, I go in and I set with powder in areas that I want set, but this just makes the makeup or the concealer just melt right into my skin, just like a wet sponge would around the face. And so it has literally altered the way that I do my makeup because I absolutely have to have a wet sponge under my eyes going in general every single day now. Hey guys, I completely forgot to record my outro. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to check out the other content creators that I collaborated with on this tag. Their channels are listed down below. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.